Hello everyone. It's time for another stream. Um, I've been away far too long uh, with work and stuff, but I thought I would just uh, sort of do a bit of a stream this afternoon and just have a talk about where things are with Elite Dangerous and what I'm up to in game. And yeah, I'm on board the carrier at the moment. Um, basically, last time I was streaming, which was around about the middle of December, I was out in the galaxy. Um, have a look where I was. There we go. There's a map. So at the moment, I'm over here, which is the Eta Carina sector at the nebula, which I found is great for exploration and just heading out. And there's even some nice mining areas around here. If you've got somewhere where you can put the ore, like a carrier. Um, before just Christmas, I'll move. I was out over here, which I actually found quite frustrating. I actually cut short that deployment of the carrier because it was really frustrating for mining. I don't know why. Uh, just didn't seem to yield very well. But the other thing was, was that... The exploration wasn't particularly great either for some reason. Um, I would head out and it just seemed as though the, it had been ex discovered. There had been a lot of explorers in that part of the world. So I decided that I would uh, pull it short. And I went back and I, actually, I did make, actually make some money from... But not nearly as much as I, I really wanted to. So I decided that I would head back and sort of refit, have a bit of a think, refit the carrier, have a bit of a think, and then see see what I could come up with. So the carrier is in a lot better situation than it was when it was out the first time. When I was streaming last, a lot of the services have been improved. We'll have a look at that. And then we'll probably have a bit of an explore a little bit later. Uh, don't really want to be on too long. I'll probably be on about an hour or something like that. So... So yes, this area that I'm in at the moment is, like I say, it's been pretty good. There's a few uh, stellar phenomena and various other different bits and pieces that I've been exploring. There's even some guardians uh, ruin, guardian ruins even, uh, at various different locations. Uh, I think there's three actually in, yeah, EOYD16 in the Eta Carina sector, which was something that I was actually quite interested in, just having a look at. Originally, I was deployed, I deployed the carrier out. This was about, when would it be? It'd be about 10 days ago, something like that, maybe longer, fortnight. Uh, but I took it out to the Statue of Liberty Nebula. And again, I think because it was so close to the bubble, which is there, I came across one or two issues with the the location that I, I didn't think it was as great as... It wasn't promising enough, really. And I did a bit of a recon out to Eta Carina, which is another 3,000 light years out but I just like the location better and strangely enough it was actually where I originally planned to go but then decided to save some of the fuel but then I thought you know no we'll just burn the fuel you can always mine it back I've got plenty on board anyway on board the carrier so it doesn't really matter but yes it's quite an interesting location the great thing is is that I have been able to make a bit of money and has been quite an interesting sort of development while I've been out here. Um, as you may or may not know, when you get a carrier, you end up uh, with a carrier bank, basically. It's a carrier balance up here. Now, this is money that you put in. You can uh, put money in 
using the budget and then you can deposit and withdraw um, you know it's as easy as just you know adding and subtracting like that and it appears there and that's the money that your carrier accesses so your payments this weekly upkeep fee here comes out of there now originally when I set out this was quite low because while I was in the bubble um, I was able to top it up but there was one or two bits and pieces that I decided to pay for with the carrier which lowered it down again so it was around about 550 since I arrived out it has gone up by about 55 million some of that is in fact it's gone up by about 70 million to be honest because it was 550 and it's up to now some of that was money that I put in but a lot of it has been large payments of about 20 million 13 million uh, something like that which I assume is coming from universal cartographic payments from explorers who are going out um, possibly also from the outfit in store which you know um, I actually think is pretty good now um, could be better could have better uh, components modules in uh, grade wise we're concentrating round about uh, I'll, I'll show you probably the easiest way to show not there but uh, there we are so basically the idea is with the carrier now is it's carrying everything for that an explorer or a miner needs but they might forget so you might go out and find um you've forgotten the pulse wave analyzer um i know one commander who's done this i'm not going to mention any names but you know he flew out to the carrier and then realized that he didn't have a pulse wave analyzer and had to go all the way back so i th that sort of gave me the idea that really on board um i really need to sort of like flesh out some of the things that people might forget or might think about upgrading at a later date so some of the things you can upgrade to quite a decent standard uh depending on the size of your ship the anti xeno seems quite popular it was certainly popular in the previous location not so much out here because um it's not really thargoid territory i believe this far out uh we're in guardian territory so the thargoids have a tendency to avoid anything like that but anyway i have been selling anti xenos so whether it's people heading over in that direction um cargo racks of course because you need storage if you're mining or you know you just want to be bigger um, space on board the storage some weapons which I did think about I am basically an exploration vehicle a mining vehicle but you do need at least a little bit of protection and I went with the energy weapons because you don't have to rely on ammunition um, but the the explosive weaponry are quite good for just fire and run off fuel management of course you might forget fuel scoop limping controllers because they do so much like literally everything from collectors to fuel transfer to recon to hatch breakers to research limpets uh mining tools all of these have been upgraded to uh, is it tier two something like that so they're they're a better standard than were on board before christmas and then vehicle hangers so just in case anybody wants to add a vehicle to their ship so i think it sort of covers quite a good broad amount of what people might forget the ship sales have also been added and they've, these have actually proved quite popular I mean, even out here you can see that someone has gone and bought a viper mark 5 or 4 even the mark the mark 5 i wonder what the mark viper mark 5 would look like um 
but yeah, these these have actually proved to be quite popular. I sold quite a few uh, sides, and even the Cobra had uh, sold quite well. But like I say, this has been a bit of a mystery because you get absolutely no information or very little information certainly about what activity i don't even know how many people are on board the carrier um before i departed the bubble for about a week i was making it clear that i was moving out and anybody who wanted a lift or wanted a a, a base that they could use for well we're out here until april the 8th so we're out here for quite a long time possibly might even be extended uh although i think i'll probably end up going back to the statue of liberty nebula uh to the original position for a month and then head back into the bubble that will mean it'd be about the beginning of may something like that i think to a certain extent it depends when odyssey releases so we'll have to see how that goes but um yeah, I mean, even out here, uh, I have no idea how many commanders are on board. I could have 20, I could have 50, I could have just two. Um, I know that one commander got a lift because I got a thank you on Twitter. But other than that, there is very little in the way of any information about who's on board. Which would be great. I mean, even just numbers of commanders would be able to provide uh, at least some data to um, yeah to just give an idea of who's relying on who's relying on you as the carrier owner um, I don't know whether any of you will have seen this you probably might have done if you've seen uh, social media but about a couple of weeks ago there was a bit of a incident in Elite Dangerous where carrier, some rather unpleasant carrier owners with, uh, if you believe the reports, sympathetic Nazis. Uh, it was certainly very, very unpleasant individuals uh, had decided they were going to basically enslave new players entice them in with promises of riches and then use them to basically as slaves to go and mine and get void opals they would end up paying rock bottom prices and of course the owner could take them back and sell all of these for vast amounts of money now fortunately frontier who uh, are the developers of elite dangerous closed it down the community also did a brilliant job with um the hull seals i believe especially although the fuel rats were involved as well shutting the the, the problem down by jumping carriers into the system where the people enslaved because they got low S fsds um you know three four if that light year jump range which once you start getting out into the uh, stars can prove rather problematic for getting back home so they literally were held hostage and yeah it was a purely thing created by carry carriers emergent gameplay and all that but definitely very distasteful and um goes to show what sort of like difference you know these great big expensive capital ships have done to the game i'm sort of divided in half really i absolutely love mine but i think there are quite a few problems with them that need to be ironed out in future the tritium um, economy is not particularly great outside of the bubble so it means if you're going through to somewhere like colonia you need to make sure that your carrier is self-sufficient in tritium. Uh, because I mean, the only way you can really do it when you're out there is mining. I don't think the situation has improved since I came back at the end of last year from Colonia. And I mined all the way. So I, I couldn't get any tritium. 
So there's that problem. I think also they've they've changed the economy of the galaxy in some quite interesting ways because they can just carry so much. As you can see, the capacity up here is absolutely massive. So if you want to literally unload a lot of material, uh, you know, you want you you want to take some item and literally just uh, load it all onto your carry and then fly it to where you can sell it for the highest price. You can do that, you know, and there's nothing the matter with that. But I don't think um, the economy in the game is has been quite ready for it. And I know re the recent CG finished early, from what I heard, because of carrier use, because people were just able to ship in such large numbers the the rare goods that were needed to get the numbers to complete the CG so yeah as I said they're beautiful things but there's one or two things that, that need sorting out the tritium is one important item because you know the fuel to move it is uh, pretty damn important and if you can't get it outside of the bubble I think a lot of owners have decided that they're just gonna keep it in system um whereas i like the idea of getting my carrier out in the black where it can certainly be of use to people they can use it as a base they need help they can come here uh there's repairs there's all sorts of things that they can do in it i mean if anybody ever got into you know any trouble and didn't have the cash to even refuel their ship then there's ways and means around that where you know they could land on board be safe contact me via twitter or somewhere like that um but these places definitely need some sort of in-game message system um you can literally jump away and commanders have no idea that you've gone um i'll try to make sure that the messages on Twitter are as accurate for where its location is and I'm even actually working on a discord channel at the moment for it but hopefully Frontier will put something into the game where you'll be able to uh, message from somewhere on this screen maybe I mean that would be great I mean even if it was just a tweet length message uh, that'd be perfect you don't need to have to write very much you can just put down what the carrier is going to be doing how long it's going to be staying in this system etc etc so yeah there's been quite a few an interesting start to the year let's put it that way in elite dangerous and uh it looks as though it's going to be a very interesting year generally for the game odyssey is coming along and i think I would like more information, that's definitely one thing I would like to see. Whether we're going to get it, um, hopefully in March maybe, as we get towards May, June, whenever it's supposed to come out, we hopefully will start getting more and more information coming through and we will be able to see exactly what all of the fuss is about. But I'm certainly looking forward to it. I think it's going to radically alter the way that the galaxy looks from what's recently been said on some of the streams from Frontier. And that's a good thing. It'll update the game. And getting space legs will... Uh, well, it'll just make totally make a difference to the game. I mean, one thing I would hope... Because I know that they've they've got some of the station interiors done. One of the areas that I do hope that they add interiors to quite quickly is the carriers. Because I think also that would be quite a good revenue stream for Frontier. If they can say, well, you know, we're going to give you some options for the way the interior of your carrier looks. Um... And I would certainly be interested in doing that, adding a bar and... I don't know what else you could add. That'd be quite interesting, though. You know, what else could you add to the carrier interior? A bars, a meeting area is is somewhere quite obvious. I suppose shops. 
um, places where you can buy weapons and spacesuits with, you know, doing it in exactly the same way as when you buy ships, you get the the sales, some of the revenue sales that go towards the carrier fund. That would be great. So you could literally land on Hebridean Isles and kit yourself out for a scavenging mission or you could kit yourself out for an exploration trip or something like that. I think that'd be great. That'd be brilliant. It would really open the game up. And it would also be brilliant. It would make it seem like the carrier was um, home. Which, at the end of the day, it's certainly turned down like that for me. Um, I used to be based out of Alios and still am. Still got some ships there. You can probably see where my ships are if I just... We'll just click on the bubble and zoom out. All of the white cobras there where I've got ships. And there's quite a few. And this was all pre... Uh, I mean, as you can see, at Cellus Primus, there's quite a few cobras and vipers. And that's because I've been reducing the number of stations that I've had ships at basically reduce them because I don't need them anymore with the the carrier arriving a jump across the bubble is just you know one jump it's nothing so I don't really see the point and the some of these might also get reduced as well but some of them have got you know reasons for I mean Ross 154 was the, stay, the system that you started at in Frontier, which Elite 2, um, which are a game I'm very fond of and started me on my Elite journey. Uh, Shinrata Desert is, of course, it's factory station, isn't it? You know, if you're doing a new build, it's the cheapest place to build a ship, so... Lewin is an old station of mine. It was my first home in the galaxy, Elite Dangerous Galaxy. So that was Oliver Enterprise, I think it's called. Yeah, Oliver Enterprise. That's where I was my first home. So again, that's that has got a bit of... I've got a tie to that emotional tie. Seems like a different lifetime ago, but um... and then down. Uh, I've generally tried to make sort of an, uh, a base or a, a home in each of the systems. Um, certainly in Empire. There's Avalon, which is one of my main areas. Um, there. And then there's also... Yeah. I've been there as well. Zemis, or however you pronounce it. I've been there for quite some time as well. That was where I based myself the first time I went down into the... Imperial space, which is quite nerve wracking. First time you do it. But of course, once you get a carrier, you can stick everything that you, you want into that carrier. So the bases sort of really become satellites rather than main bases anymore. Um, but they're always useful to have. I actually came back, took the carrier out, and I actually came back to the bubble, left the carrier where it was, 6,000 light years out, and just came back in because I'd got a, an anaconda build that wasn't behaving very well. It was um, running incredibly hot. So what I decided to do was come back, re-engineer it, get, change some modules out so that it, it dealt with the uh, heat a lot better, and then fly back out, and that's what I did. And I also took place in the CG that took place there in um, hit 54, 530. I don't often do CGs, but I did quite enjoy the combat 
in there. It was uh, it's very enjoyable. But after that was over, I decided that I would get back out um, to the carrier and start doing some exploration, which is what we're going to do now. So we will head out in a direction. Generally, I find around a nebula that for the first 200 light years, usually a lot of what out there. Oh dear, we run out of the bookmarks. We'll delete these two because these were two previous destinations. I haven't actually got. I've run into that old explorer's problem of not having enough bookmarks. There, yeah, it's worked this time. But yeah, like I was saying, I generally find that the nebulas are very popular areas. They're obviously quite visual, so people are beautiful to look at. So a lot of explorers head out in those sort of like directions and you end up with an area of space around them that's been pretty thoroughly explored. Scanner ready. Let's take a look back. I'd say I rather I, I do enjoy having a carrier. Um, you know, you end up with big bills, twenty five million in my case. A week with the upkeep but you can manage it um, you just need to be well organized I think uh, and if you're having long gaps away from the game you can always suspend a lot of the services and I think if you actually place the carrier in the right place out in space potentially if you got some commanders visiting you could make um, money. I would love to know where the cash has come. That money has come for the carrier balance. Um, like I say, it's a considerable amount. It's it's more than enough to pay this weekly upkeep fee. And I don't know where it's come from. I would imagine this will be the already pre-discovered yeah fuel scooping I generally scan the system because I think it's previously discovered, but other than that, I don't really see the point in hanging around and going over other people's work. Um, I suppose on occasion you might miss, you might get something that they've missed, but... We haven't actually heard that much about exploration in Odyssey, which um, I'm hoping that they're going to talk about those areas of Odyssey which isn't isn't about combat. Um, there's an awful lot of commanders who like combat. There's also an awful lot of commanders who aren't interested in combat, and I would love to. Here, 
scavenging, for instance, um, being able to scavenge from, from wrecks and things. I mean, that sounds absolutely brilliant. This one? Nope. Fuel scoop disengaged. Frame shift drive charging. Tauri stars you've got to be careful with because they look like they're scoopable but they're not. Yeah, if Odyssey can um, deliver some things for explorers to do and uh, scavenging, um, be interesting to see what trade is like. I know people like Pew Pew and it's a lot of fun, but you don't really, you want to give commanders choices. to be careful around here because there's plenty of stars that aren't scoopable so you can soon find yourself running out of fuel if you're not careful. I actually went and changed the fuel scoop out of this because it was uh, ridiculously small which meant me changing the build slightly and I didn't want to reduce the jump range which is 50 light years with uh, this Aspect Explorer, Jura, named after the Scottish island. It's very nice. If you ever get the chance to visit, it's even got a couple of distilleries on it. Yeah, I just needed the fuel scoop to be able to collect more um, fuel as I was travelling along with this. The refueling times were just ridiculously long. And by the time that I'd altered um, things around, I think I'd only really lost about two year light range off off the, the total distance. I think it did about 52. And it currently does just over 50, so that wasn't too bad, I didn't think. Scoop disengaged. System scan complete. Frame shift drive charging. I've been heading out a couple of times doing sort of a big loop, which roughly covers probably about 2,500 light years, something like that. And on average, it's delivering about 8 million credits, which. I don't think it's too bad. So you go out, you know, three times and you've basically got the money for the carrier upkeep. So I'm going to keep an eye on carrier balance and see how that how that goes. I do want to do some mining while I'm out here as well because I've found some quite good mining areas. What they will deliver though is a different matter, but they do look promising. 
stick that there at the refuel as we wait. I'm an equal opportunities explorer. I scan everything. Um, I know some people dodge the ice worlds rocky ice worlds because they're not valuable but the way that I think is they deserve to be discovered too I have found a couple of water worlds which have been great undiscovered as well which is brilliant so I've mapped those they've been worth pretty good money probably a bit just as I thought, probably just a little bit too to the... A bit close to the star. Is. I mean, basically, a lot of it is just ice bodies and rocky ice worlds, so it's not going to make me particular rich. But at least it's a bit of money. So it's about five or six jumps out, and then you start getting onto the, the fresh systems. People just love nebulas, and I mean, they're a brilliant place to, to aim for. You can understand why they're popular. Another fresh system. see what's in this. Fuel scooping complete. Of course, with Odyssey, there's going to be first footfall, so that's going to be quite exciting. Discover a world, map it, and then set foot on it for the first time. And just a little bit further out. There's nothing like getting your name on the planet, is there? Uh, it's, you know, especially if it's, it's going to be fantastic in, you know, when we get landable water worlds and earth likes that you've discovered and it's got your name on it and you're the first person to land on it with uh, your ship and then you get out and you wander around and you're able to potentially see the wildlife just like you can at the moment in uh, No Man's Sky maybe complete. maybe even get a pet that's just what my fleet carrier needs actually is a pet I would even pay Frontier for a pet, come to think of it. Four, 
I don't know what sort of pet thing it would be, but I'm sure that they're uh, they could come up with some interesting animals, creatures. that this has been discovered before. Lord Watson. Aristocracy. Have a look. Lord Watson might have been quite thorough. He has, but I think he's only just done the stars. I think there's more than that. From the sounds of it, from what I've heard from the live streams and things that Frontier have put out recently, a lot of the planets are going to look amazing with Odyssey. Fortunately, as a lifetime expansion pass owner, I'll be able to uh, take part in the Alpha, which should be a lot of fun. See what it's all about. Make some plans for when it hits the live servers. Some of those systems where you've got to wave your mouse around and try and find it. Ah, there it is. System scan complete. So there's something to discover there. Stars were already discovered, but the uh, planets weren't, which is probably means that it's uh, one of those. It was discovered by Lord Watson back in the day with um, just a basic where they only had certain range. Fringes Scanned. It had a certain distance that it would scan, so we wouldn't see anything outside of that distance. Um, so it could have been quite a few years since someone last visited that system. the stars have been discovered I think but there's plenty of other bodies in the system that haven't this is our friend Lord Watson again have a look at the system map no twitch 231 Now apt for the stream.
It is surprising how these scans add up. Um, it greatly depends on what you end up coming across, of course. But I actually find it quite relaxing. I know some people are probably saying, oh, it's boring. Not like combat. When I was doing the CG, I thought, you know, you know, you you go, you shoot a whole lot of stuff, you end up going back. It is quite repetitive in a way. I can understand why people enjoy it, because combat situations are different. Um, sometimes they used to go pretty well, and then other times, you know, you'd end up having to back out before your shields went down. Generally speaking, um... I did find it enjoyable, but I wouldn't want to do it as the main thing in Elite. I suppose actually, come to think about it, another game that I don't really know very much about the exploration mechanics in it is Star Citizen. System scan complete. Um, I don't think it's going to be like this, where you know you're discovering new systems. Um, I think it's going to be more about new points of interest and potentially new jump portals. Um, It will be interesting to see exactly what they have in mind for the exploration role. After all, one of the best ships in the game at the moment, in Star Citizen, is the Carrot, which is an exploration ship, so... Shift drive what does it do? What will you be able to find? They've not really said very much. been taking a bit of a break from Star Citizen. Um, I usually do after all of the, the fun around uh, Christmas and the um, show in November which you know is great fun but you end up playing quite a bit of Star Citizen. I'll probably check it out over the weekend actually. System scan complete. It's amazing, amazing how I um, move back and forth between games. Sometimes I'll play a lot of Elite Dangerous and then sometimes I'll play a lot of Star Citizen. I suppose it really depends what's going on. When Odyssey releases, I imagine I'll be playing a lot of Elite Dangerous. And I mean, to be honest, with everything that's been going on in Star Citizen at the moment, they've had quite an interesting Xeno threat invading Stanton, which uh, Stanton is the main system in... It's the only system currently in Star Citizen, but they had Xeno Threat who were, uh, as you can tell by the, the name, don't like aliens, but basically they don't like anybody. So there's been a bit of a dynamic event with that, that uh, the Star Citizen community has been able to get involved with. I didn't, mainly because it didn't really appeal to me, to be honest. Um, there's a lot of pew pew um, and uh, you know it's still really testing that's what CIG are doing with events like that they're seeing how the community 
play it, what the performance is like. So yeah, it didn't it didn't really call out to me to but apparently they're they're going to be doing more dynamic events in Star Citizen over the year. Um so I'll keep an eye out and see, you know, I'll, Xeno Threat I could live without. But some of the others might be interesting to take part in. And apparently they're pretty good earners as well, so uh or in game currency. Because you can buy the ships with in-game currency. Um, it's a lot of work. But you don't have to pay out money, real money, for the ships. You can just buy a starter package and go from there. System scan complete. Ah, a water world. Brilliant. Perfect. So, we've got a, a water world to map. Is there? Let's all head off and map that. See whether I can get the efficiency bonus. I imagine because I'm streaming, I won't. It's quite a distance. So yeah, Star Citizen's been quite interesting, um, but not really something that uh, I've been keeping up with news and events, you know, uh, YouTube channels and content content creators and things. But uh, actually partaking in the event, I decided to give it a miss. say with the IAE event uh, at the end of November was it beginning of December whenever it was I think it finished at the end of beginning of December it finished um, it's quite intense um, you know you're visiting every day to take a look at the, the the halls and then after that there's sort of like the the run up Christmas and I was also wanting uh, I managed to actually get a referral over the Christmas period which meant I got a free dragonfly a Drake dragonfly vehicle which is fantastic and um, yeah that was just through referral so I was sort of like living a bit of quite a lot of star citizen at that point as well before Christmas um, Christmas is actually my anniversary for pledging for the game so I've been pledged to Star Citizen for two years now. Don't regret my choices. I think it's going to be a fantastic space MMO. It's just going to take an awful lot of time to finish. It's very much like Elite Dangerous is. It's very demanding. It's groundbreaking. It's all of those things and and more and it takes time to build those things to get those things sorted out I think those people who are still saying that it's a con um, well I think they've probably got reasons for saying that I mean maybe they you know there's certain, uh, certainly a lot of things to do with Star Citizen that aren't particularly uh, admirable, but on the other hand, if you want to get involved with the game, you only have to buy a starter package. You don't have to go any further than that. And all of the people who have spent money on the game, believe in the game, and it's their choice. They want to buy a Carrick. Um, then it's purely down to them. You just don't want to be 
anybody with Yeah, you don't want to be anybody who's compulsively into collecting because that could end up quite expensive. But... You know, again, if people have got the money and want to spend it and they can afford it, that's the important bit, I don't see why they shouldn't. On the surface scanner. I know Elite Dangerous actually gets compared with Star Citizen a lot and Star Citizen gets compared with Elite Dangerous but I actually think that they come from quite fundamentally different directions when it comes to I mean you just got all you've got to do is just buy the game and you can access any of the ships in the game which you can do in Star Citizen at the moment but the problem is is if you save say 25 million credits going too fast if you save up and get your 25 million credits or a not credits the currency in Star Citizen can't remember it you will um, you know you can buy the ship but because persistence isn't in there yet and they occasionally do data wipes you'd lose the ship which of course you wouldn't do once a game is launched. So for me, I wouldn't be particularly that interested in doing a grind for something that I have no idea when I'm going to lose it. This is six probes. See if we can get the efficiency bonus. Surface scanned by fifty per cent. That is looking quite promising. Do you believe it? We're one percent off. the blank. There's the area we haven't covered. Be able to do that easy enough. You need to get 90% and then you get the rest. You don't have to There we go. Surface scan complete. Efficiency target, bo target bonus, which is great. Means a little bit more cash. And it also means that I've got my name on that water world, for discovering it, and also for mapping it.
lot of interest for the... I see. I get the impression that some of these systems have just been either scanned very basically or whoever it is, whoever it is um, the commander in question has just been using just an, one of the early discovery scanners which don't say so, said earlier um, just do it by distance I mean the new scanners are a lot better and there's another one there you would have thought and there there's loads of gas giants here I just you know, discovered that one but he didn't discover that one farther off down to one more which is somewhere over here system scan complete and head on our way again star is not scoopable I believe I have been using the anaconda that I went and um, Went back to the bubble in and altered. But I found that I quite like the fuel economy of the ASP. In fact, I actually think that one of the benefits of actually getting the fleet carrier. Three, two, I'm just waiting until the countdown's over. One of the benefits of getting a fleet carrier is that you tend to use. You've got all of your ships with you, so you've got a lot more choice about what you use when you're out exploring, for instance. So, you know, you get back to your carrier and you think, oh, I'm fed up of using a, an ex Asp Explorer. I think I might use my uh, Diamondback or some other ship, a Cobra or something like that. So it gives you options. Um, whereas, of course, if you head out two, three, four, 5,000 light years out you are stuck with that ship until you get back Scan complete. Another one done. Frame shift drive charging. I think the other thing that I want from Odyssey, 
I was noticing there was uh, something about this today where uh, on the on the forums where people were being asked, you know, what they would like. I think more SRVs. Um, more so actually than ships. Um, I would certainly like to see at least, you know, another three or four SRVs added to the game. Something else I could flog on the carrier as well. It's RV dealership. At the moment we've only got the scarab and it's a nice little srv but it was just nice to have a bit of choice something with tracks maybe um an armored one um you know for attacking Quick one. Frame shift drive charging. I think one of the strange things about Elite Dangerous is first started out in the game as basically a trader that's what I was interested in and over the years I've sort of moved away from that and gone in for exploration and that's been accelerated by things like the fleet carrier arriving um, I do like doing other things I do like doing mission runs I'm not a pure explorer that's, I do other things um, Fuel scoop disengaged. But I don't really see myself as a trader anymore, really. It's rather strange, because actually, in a way, in Star Citizen, Richard Campbell is... Yeah, he's, he's going to be sort of like an explorer and merchant. Both of the ships that I've got in Star Citizen, both of the big ships, one's an explorer, um, although it's capable of doing a lot of other things, that's a Carrick, and then the other one is the Banu Merchantman, which is like a, a mobile bazaar, really. It's uh, a mobile market. Like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and not that dissimilar from what I would like to see with the fleet carriers in, um, in Elite Dangerous, where commanders could have shops on board their carriers like I was mentioning earlier you want to buy a gun there's a gun shop you want to buy armor there's an armor shop System scan complete. I do like the idea of helping commanders out while in the black giving them a lift giving them somewhere to stay for eight weeks 12 weeks however long it is out in the black a home away from home and then heading back into the bubble servicing the 
carrier, getting it ready for the next trip out, and then advertising the fact that heading out to another nebula or another area of space. And I think that's probably what I'll be doing for the vast majority of this year, is earning some money, kitting out the carrier, however it goes i mean at the moment it's about right so i can just start saving the money up doing a bit of mining as well that's a good earner we can find the right area uh just raising a bit of money and then getting ready for anything that's added to odyssey carrier wise it's useful for me and it's useful for other commanders as well so it's a win-win the way i see it um if the commander's out in the black i'm thinking I've only got this exploration suit on me, but I could really do with a scavenging suit, because a scavenging suit will be a thing with Odyssey, apparently. Um, dedicated to scavenging wrecks and things. Um, I need somewhere to buy, and, you know, if I'm able to facilitate that, that would be great. When it was mentioned on one of the streams, um, they didn't say no. In fact, they didn't say very much about it, which gave me the impression that it's certainly something that they're considering. And I think they probably like the idea because, like I was saying earlier, if you end up with a carrier owner and he's got uh, an interior you know that he wants to make his ho uh, his own he's gonna spend arcs doing that so it's a nice revenue stream for frontier to add to the other revenue streams that they've got it's all about skins isn't it But if that was the case, and they did add stores and things, I definitely think this was, should be some sort of message board. There needs to be a message board. Commanders on board need to be able to find out directly from the carrier owner what's going on, where the carrier's going, how long it's going to be staying. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you can use it. Discovered it was. What like that one had. You certainly find that you know if you go into certain areas, especially if they're well away from main routes between Nebula and. Uh, nebula is it um, you generally find that a lot of the systems are totally fresh outside of those corridors Just like when you go into Colonia, you know, a lot of the systems along that route have largely been discovered. Because there's been a lot of traffic going along in those routes and commanders have been scanning all the way. So you've got to leave the path a little bit to discover those fresh areas. Well, we're going up to an hour and 20 minutes. So I think I'll probably start winding this stream down. We've not had a bad stream for the first stream for 2021. 
I intend coming back on Monday, potentially with some more Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen, depends on how I feel. Um, maybe do a little bit more exploring. Um, could also say take a first look at what's going on in Star Citizen at the moment, see what the build is like. Because uh, I have actually I've updated to it, but I haven't actually played any of it yet, so it'd be interesting to take a look at. But we'll do a bit more Elite Dangerous. Well, again, I think it'll probably be Monday and Wednesday. Uh, and the time probably ran about 2 o'clock UTC, something like that. I want to try and get the stream up and running again at a regular time. Possibly can. Just that January. And most of February has been pretty busy. It's one thing or another works being a lot busier than usual. I think a lot of that's to do with COVID. System scan complete. So that's the system scan complete and I think that's probably going to be it for this stream as well. The stream is complete. So I should be back again on Monday with another stream and uh, until then, I will probably just do a great big loop again, probably tonight, and then head back to the carrier and cash in the cash in the data. It'll be, be a bit more money towards the weekly fee for my carrier. So, thanks for watching, and I'll be back again very, very soon.